Alrighty. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the start of an epic journey and a brand new series. This is going to be a, a heroic quest of taking a game from dirt putting to a master crap. Craft, not crap. This is the first devlog of a little game I like to call Farmhold. Uh, Farmhold. And today I'm going to be creating my own physics engine. So far for physics in the game, I've got whatever you would call this. Now you'll notice that the rats and the player do not fall through the block, which is perfectly good. They go bonk bonk and they don't fall through. You'll notice that these rats quickly stack up on top of each other and is it just me or does lo do those rats look like they're engaging in the reproductive cycle? Oh, nasty, kill them, destroy the abominations. Uh oh, uh, the fact that the rats can stack up on top of each other like that is not good enough for me at least. Die rats, die, every last one of you, every last one of you. So I originally got the game for this rat busting machine because in Saskatchewan rats are a serious menace. They they can gnaw through they can gnaw through wood. Alright. If you've ever been in Saskatchewan and you've seen one of these vicious suckers, you will know you want to kill them on sight. They're not cute, I'm telling you. So like one day, suddenly the amount of eggs we're getting from the chicken coop just dwindles to about like three. So we're like, where are all these eggs going? You can't just have like 12 eggs a day and suddenly three eggs a day. What, what happens there? I mean there's 25 chickens there only producing three eggs. So dad set out with his 22 to go investigate. And lo and behold, sitting there in the egg box is a little rat. And he's got an egg tucked under his armpit like as if it's a football. And then there's another rat on the ground that just starts chasing dad, teeth flared. Dad nearly lost his leg that day. And that's why I decided to make a game about rats. If you want to hear the rest of the story of how dad survived a rat mauling, you can read all about it in Mick Van Buck, a soon to be released book by Peter N. Mast. Stay tuned to the end of the video to find out all about it. So for physics, this was the best that my inferior skills and inferior brain could come up with. It's time to start with some new skills and perhaps a new brain. The only thing that seemed quite logical to me was use somebody else's physics engine. And thus enters Box 2D. And so I snagged that code inserted it into my game and just like that boom physics and physics that actually work but there was a problem there always is a problem first of all not coding it yourself that's lame second of all i want more rats than what this has to offer now if i check out the terminal i've only got 800 rats and my frame rate has gone all the way from a glorious nine six thousand to a pitiful 1000 frames per second that's not good enough. I want so many rats that we can create rat tsunamis. But you'll quickly notice, first of all, there's this screen shake and that was thanks to SFML just not really working at all. We're only clipping along at 30 frames per second. What is this, an Xbox we're playing this on? No, this is a glorious PC. Not a very good one, but hey, 1200 rats and you'll notice the game. It's not even playable at this point. And that's not good enough. Instead of optimizing my code, which would have been the logical solution, I decided to undertake a brand new physics engine myself. To find a solution to the problem, I delved deep into the archives of the internet with Google. Google? I meant to say, I dived deep into the archives of the internet with DuckDuckGo. And I searched for 2D physics systems. Which one, which one? There's quite a few links here, but I eventually settled on the most official looking link of them all. And that was a physics system. I don't even know how I found this in the first place, but it's around here somewhere. I failed to see it. It was by a university of sorts. <laughs> how did I even find it in the first? Oh, wait. Nope, no, that's not it. Newcastle University, U University physics and that right there was the link that solved everything even though the game tutorial that they provided was in 3d i figured converting to 2d would be easy enough and with a snap of a fingers i'd have it licked i'm a mass i've got a master's degree in newcastle university now oh boy boy didn't even have to go to college the first thing I realized when looking at this tutorial was that it's in a PDF, which is pretty awesome considering that my internet has a bad habit of abandoning ship from time to time. After taking a quick scroll through the entire article, I just figured, okay, uh, looks pretty simple. If blocks are going bump bump, then separate them apart. 
easiest pot. And then there are some tasty tidbits on Ray's casting, and I didn't really worry about that at all. I just kept scrolling anyway. Uh, ah, yeah, yes, very, very interesting. But what I think I'll do is I'll snatch the code and make a quick dash for it. 3,000 kilobytes shouldn't be that big. I'll just go swipe. Swiper, no swiping. Oh wow, that was gonna be there a while. While the source code downloaded, I figured I might as well whip out the old pixel art and get creating a couple assets. The first asset I began working on was some in-game art of the main character, Jeremiah Buckland. Now it's nowhere near being finished and I'm nowhere near being an expert, but I do have to say it's like coming together pretty darn good. Still needs more details with the grass and everything like that, but the download had finished and I was ready to go grab some source code. Oh boy, oh boy. I sure hope this code is 100% working and isn't ridden with bugs and ni nasty nightmares. First thing I began to understand when I looked at this code was that these guys weren't the professionals they had told me they were. For university code, <laughs> it's seen better days. So we got assets. All right, what's in assets? Assets, makes sense. Everything is very simple to understand. We got common, okay. I mean, it's pretty common <laughs> to have a common folder. All right, nothing weird there. But then, but then you've got CSC 8503 common, which is filled with duplicate files that can actually be found in C in just the CSC 8503 folder. But you'll also notice that inside the CS8503 folder, there's this other folder called CS8503 common as well. So is this a duplicate? Oh wait, no, no, this has more files than this folder. So which one am I supposed to use? Well, just open up, let's open up our little collision detection. Collision detection.cbp, see how much of the source code is actually intact. Oh, oh, nastiness. I gotta open that with sublime text. There, that, that's better. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, looks like it's all there. Wait, is it actually all there? Yeah, yeah, that's not all the source code because where is the ABBs? Where are the circle intersections? Well, that's definitely not it, it must be in the CSC 503. All right, now I can go snatch some source code. Oh boy, oh boy. And then it hit me. Return false, return false, return false. The code wasn't finished yet. So unfortunately, it wouldn't be as simple as just saying swiper no swiping and snatching some code. Turns out I would ha have to actually go through the tutorial. So I cracked open the tutorial and had a look of what was going on. Now everything in the collision detection, it all worked, but not all that made sense. An example, we have we have a structure called contact point, where two th two objects just go and collide. But then we also have a structure called a collision info. The bizarreness just comes from the fact that you could very easily throw all these elements, all these wonderful little data bits, into the collision info structure and avoid just take out the contact point structure entirely. Worse comes to worse when they create a function called add contact point. When it's a structure anyways. The first thing I did in my code was spawn a black hole that just sucked the player right in and now the player is replaced by a circle just to represent him for now as a testing device. After that I implemented an origin just to keep track of where everything is in world space coordinates and also threw in an indicator of which way is east and west just in case you forgot. I threw in some mountain scenery real quick just because it's a lot better than a sky gradient and after that I implemented proper movement based on f Newton's theory of physics which states that force equals mass times acceleration. With proper movement enabled for the physics system I decided to give the player a couple of friends to bounce around with. Hey look at that, it works. Turns out this physics system wasn't quite so bad after all. After about 10 hours, I mean minutes, of debugging later, I figured out that the problem was actually an error of my own, that I just needed to take into account the actual mass of the objects themselves. 
with the bug fixed it all worked very nicely until i ran it once more quickly realized that i had myself a little situation turns out it was a good idea to actually draw the origin of the world because i clearly told that black hole to spawn right there and instead it decided to be rebellious and spawn way up there and physics did not apply to it if i whacked into the rest of the blocks physics did not apply to them either although it seemed like as if i was bouncing on some ghost blocks blocks those are circles first thing this told me was i had a memory leak oh boy i love memory leaks a memory leak in programming basically happens when you try and send mail to a house in the program that doesn't actually exist variables are like houses and you can correspond with them through the mailman but sometimes what happens is you take a house and you delete the house but then you're still sending mail straight to that empty void and then what happens in that case is a memory leak in that case the mail just essentially goes to any one of these houses and that is not a well-behaved mail system the most painful part of a memory leak is it doesn't really tell you on which line it occurs in your code so you have no idea where it's happening you just know it's happening so i decided the heck with that i might as well just go do some more pixel art while i think of a solution while i racked my brain for the solution to this ever-present problem i came up with this monstrosity the mother tick so the mother tick you see how she moves very nice is going to be an enemy in the game eventually so it's uh, the game is going to be a survival type game where you have to survive increasingly difficult hordes of enemies the two main enemy types i'm going to deal with are rats and ticks to put things into perspective this is the size of the player. If you've ever lived in Saskatchewan, you know that ticks can get, while not quite to that degree, they can get pretty big. I've had ticks the size of grapes, and they don't taste like grapes. After putting together a walk cycle for the mother tick, I still had no idea what I was going to do about the memory leak, but I decided I might as well give it another crack of the crayon can anyway, because perseverance is a virtue. After an amount of time that I would not wish to disclose, <sighs> It was three hours. I finally realized that I had made a critical mistake. In the wonderful language of C++, which is still the best by the way, you have containers called lists and you have containers called vectors. Now typically you always want to go with a vector, but if you have a pointer to, a ve to an element within a vector, it's not gonna work. By simply changing the vector to a list, the code worked flawlessly other than some little warnings but <laughs> listen if my ship's not burning to the ground i don't want to hear any warnings as long as if it works uh, good enough for me so far everything was working very nice I, if i do say so myself so we got four friends for our player not enough more friends we need 400 friends for our player now that's a little more friendly this is actually uh, this is this gameplay is actually kind of fun actually you know i wouldn't mind a stage or even a level an entire level d dedicated to this type of speed running oh, with proper bouncy objects i also coded in a restitution factor that can be easily modified typically restitution is set to a number smaller than one and this number is how much of the original energy of the collision is retained a number bigger than one means that you're gaining energy from nowhere and that's an interesting idea and <laughs> look at that uh, that's 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 fun with the new restitution factor implemented you can kind of fiddle around with this and then you can end up doing something dumb like going badoink oh wait, where is everybody say so these are like bouncy this is would be great for a trampoline but the reason that it all just kind of f sprays everywhere like a can of fizzy cola is you're gaining energy so any collision that happens you gain a little bit of force and newton's laws of physics states that that's just that's not meant to happen like that that was a wholesome and wonderful experience but does it work with aabbs which are boxes and look at that it all works beautifully that is some wow i can't believe it worked on the first try and no sir that is not working correctly also you can zoom in by just going just scrolling on the wheel scroll and no so after rubbing my head to haps promote some more brain power juice flow and also because my head was a little bit itchy too i began doubting the integrity of the entire university system itself i began wondering maybe these professors are just overpaid people in white lab coats who don't really know what they're doing after a few more head rubs i quickly understood that it was actually my own math function of clamping that was flawed min no that should be max, not minimum, max. And just like that, I hit F7 to compile and run it again 
and everything worked bingo and just like that everything was all headed north instead of headed south i'm tempted to give this player just a little more a little more restitution for old time's sake whoa that okay we're bouncing we are going places like a jackrabbit so that it seems like you you bounce higher and higher until you get to a certain point where you stop going as high i'm not sure what that is i don't know oh wait and then does that <laughs> this is actually some quality gameplay i'm detecting right here ramming speed pow feels like the old days of playing in the sandbox after setting the restitution back to a more reasonable number i re-implemented the player's sprite and gave him a box to collide with instead of a circle so now that looks pretty good aside from the fact that he's kind of bouncing he's bouncing a bit too much for my likings and he's moving a bit too fast for my likings as well. But all that can be easily fine-tuned now that the majority of the physics system is actually created. The last thing this physics system needs is some oriented bounding boxes and some convex polygons, but that's a whole can of worms so that's just going to stay on the shelf for a little bit longer. All right, and that's about all I have to show for the game for this episode. Thanks for watching and subscribing, code like, and if you wanna join the official Discord, it's in the description, or it should be. And with that said, I will see you next video after a word from our sponsor. What is that doing in my bed? It's Mick Van Buck. Mick Van Buck Trophy Mosquito is a hilarious humor book written by my dad, Peter in Mast. It's a collection of three humorous stories that are guaranteed to have you doubled over in belly rolls of laughter. Mick Van Buck Trophy Mosquito is a prelude to a bigger humor book that my dad is currently working on publishing, so he's working, he's in the process. It comes jam-packed with illustrations and it is a hilarious book to read. Let's open this up and have a little read. Chapter four, Grand Juice. To receive love in life, we must also give love back. The giving of love can be simply gagging down some of my Grandma J's cheap, extremely watered down orange juice. Although this does not mean that when Grandma J offers me a second glass of the toxic mixture, that I have to gag that down, <laughs> that I have to gag that poison down as well. <laughs> I can at this point just politely say with a big happy smile, no thanks Grandma J, I like the taste of city tap water. Oh boy, is this water ever good? Maybe I'll try that sour milk in your fridge and not, maybe I'll give that sour milk in your fridge another try. It only expired two years ago. My favorite, yum. <laughs> I forget how funny it is, but I'm actually reading it again. As a giveaway, I'm giving away 10 free McFan bucks to the first 10 people who ask. Free shipping included there too. So four have been claimed so far, so you could be next. All you gotta do to claim it is just send your full name and mailing address to codegover at gmail.com and you will win a free McVanbuck Trophy Mosquito today. Laughter is guaranteed.